Okay, so I just finished um, showing you the curriculum for my fifth grader for what she will be using, and I'll put a link up in the description. I'll put a link up here, no, up here, um, if you are interested in seeing that. So in this video, I'm going to show you what my eighth grader will be using for her homeschool curriculum in the year 2018, 2019, which we start very soon. Um, my name is Shana, long A, and I have two kids who've been homeschooling. This will be our 10th year. I have an eighth grader and a fifth grader. Okay, so instead of just turning the camera around and showing you everything on the table because it's a lot and it could overwhelm you, um, I kind of want to explain it, but I'm actually going to show you the base of the curriculum. I'm going to show you one book for each subject so you can see that it's it's no big deal. It's not, you know, a lot. Um, but most of the stuff that you'll see on the table is supplements, resources, references, you know, extra things we may do, uh, may not do. Okay, so don't think, whoa, you know, she's going to do all that, you know. Um, no, <laughs> it won't happen. We may try. But before I get started, um, for those of you that didn't watch the fifth grade um, curriculum reveal thing, um, I have not made a video in a few months. We have been very, very busy, and I will try to do a video, you know, saying what we've been doing and where we've been and um, how our first year at our new location has been. Um, but I'll try to do that in another video. But I will go ahead and state the obvious. I have braces. Yes. And I do not like it, um, but it's necessary. And uh, so in a couple years, um, you know, hopefully I won't have them anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, show you our base curriculum and what we're using for my eighth grader. And there's, um, I guess I'll tell why I chose what I chose. Okay, so for my eighth graders, math. <laughs> You know, math, right? Um, we're doing something new. Again, story of my life, I feel like. Um, okay. <laughs> I hate to even say it. We're doing Saxon. How embarrassing. Okay. I, I'll have to tell you why we've never, why we have never done Saxon before. That would have to be a different video. This would be way too long. It's already going to be long because that's just how I am. All right. So get past why I've never done it and tell you why I'm doing it. Okay, so um, so last year, you know, she switched over to Becca and no problem, went just fine. Um, so we were like, okay, we're just going to continue a Becca straight through, you know, because we've done a Becca off and on for so long. Well, when it went time to order it, I... Honestly, it's kind of a selfish reason. I was a little scared, you know, thinking that um, as she gets older and older and older, um, the topics in math are going to get harder and harder and harder. And um, so it was like that reason, you know, because I was a little scared that when she gets high school, I may not be able to teach it to her. I may not understand it, which I should, but, you know, I may not. And... We kind of have some other things in the works in our life, so I may not even be able to help her when she gets older. So I was like, okay, we will buy the um, the teacher, what is it, like long distance learning or something like that, DVD teacher that Rebecca has, but that's insanely expensive. So I'm like, okay, we're not doing that. So my friend told me that Saxon had dive CDs. So, that's what we did. <clears throat> um, I bought uh, the hardback, like, public school type Saxon textbook for her to try out. And for, like, five bucks at abooks.com. And she tried it for about a week. She really liked it. She used it with the dive. Um, she liked it just fine. And so, we bought the homeschool kit. So, this is a really big book. Um, but she likes it. Um... She doesn't have any problem with it so far. So, she is doing the Saxon Math um, 87 Homeschool Kit. And then, uh, this is the third edition. <clears throat> and then the Saxon um, DVD. And this guy here, 
he uh, he actually teaches the lesson. You know, he teaches it, so it's similar to teaching textbooks, but he does not, you know, you don't type anything in. It's not self-graded or anything like that. He just verbally tells you, and, you know, there's things appearing on the board, you know, problems appearing on the board and things like that. But this is a Christian um, teacher, so that was a bonus, and she likes it. Now, his lectures, oh my goodness, they vary. Like, one was like three minutes, and one was like 31 minutes, um, so they, they actually vary in time. But so far, she hasn't complained. Okay, so why, so the reason we chose Math 87 for Saxon is because um, I had her, I went to Saxon's website, I forget what it is. Saxon Resources, maybe? I don't know. But there's a placement test somewhere on there, assessment test you can take. And she placed in the, um, like, she placed in Algebra 1, so that's where I should put her, according to the test. But the test also did say that, you know, you may want to take other things into consideration instead of just what the test says for placement. So then I went to the Dives website, and they had some, like, I don't know if it's frequently asked questions or what, but there was a place on there, and um, they're like, where should I put my kid? And he had said that he recommends that if a child has never taken Saxon 87 or pre-algebra, you know, like in the eighth grade, that that's where they need to start. Even if they were to place higher, he recommends they start in Saxon 87 or Saxon pre-algebra. So I was like, okay, well, what's the difference then between 87 and pre-algebra? Um, all my research, I spent like a month just learning all I could about Saxon. I learned about John Saxon, his history, his pilot days, his methods, his just everything. Um, anyhow, <laughs> I learned more than I cared to know, I guess. But, um, so the difference between the 87 and the pre-algebra is 87 came after the pre-algebra was made. And that came because like some kids weren't quite ready for pre-algebra. But what I found was that the content is the exact same. In the 87 and the pre-algebra, when it's all said and done, all the topics they learn about, the concepts, the content, all of that is the exact same. The difference is in how they start off approaching, approaching it. They said that um, 87 approaches approaches it, um, you know, more gently, more slowly, and I was thinking, well, if it's the same, then why not get a nicer one, right? So that's what we did. Okay, so that's why, eight minutes in, why we chose that. Okay, and then for language, we chose the Good and the Beautiful Language, Arts, and Literature for level seven. Um, now, this, um, I thought about putting her in they have a new series uh, called Book Studies. I think it's like level 8 book studies. See, they don't have a level 8 language program. It goes from level 7 straight to high school. But they, sorry, I keep hearing people <laughs> drive by. It sounds like they're slowing down. Anyhow, but the, so it goes from level 7 to high school. And the book studies is, is brand new. I think the first one comes out this month in August. Um, and it's, it's a book study. You know, you like the first one they have ready is Abraham Lincoln. So you read it and then they give the teacher a guide and the teacher, you know, assigns like writing projects, grammar questions. Um, so it includes writing, grammar, spelling, maybe geography, art. I don't know about those two. So that's what we were going to do. And uh, then, I, then I was thinking ahead and I was thinking, okay, after that, she will go into the high school um, path for this. Well, she she's good with grammar. That's not a problem. Um, she's pretty good about writing creatively, making up stories. So that's not really a problem. Her problem when it comes to the language part of it is um, researching and, you know, writing essays. That's really a, a weakness of hers. So I decided... and. I figured that this might be more beneficial in that area than the book studies, so that's why I went ahead and put her in the level seven. And um, so that's what she's doing for language. Seems like I'm missing something. And then 
for science. <laughs> um, this is a book that we were supposed to do last year, um, Abeka Science, but we didn't do it. Um, instead, we did um, Chemistry, the Elements, Ingredients of the Universe by Ellen J. McHenry. We did that. So I could not figure out what to do for science. I gave her like 20 different options and she's like, I don't know, just whatever you want. It doesn't matter, just whatever you want. And I just kept hounding her like, which one? Pick one, pick one. She's like, can we just do the one we didn't do last year? So I'm like, okay, fine. So we are just doing a Becca science from last year that we didn't do. Now, for history, her and her fifth grade sister are doing early modern. It's a Simply Charlotte Mason. It's a year of history, geography, and Bible. So this covers history, geography, and Bible, but we will not be doing their geography or Bible, just their history. So last year was our first year doing uh, Simply Charlotte Mason's history, and we did the Middle Ages. And I probably should have mentioned that last year was our first year of doing The Good and the Beautiful as well. Okay, so now I will turn you around. Seems like there was something else I was going to say hmm, before I turned you around. I don't know. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and turn you around so you can see the big pile I have on the table. And remember... Most of it is, you know, just resources, supplements, references, fun things. It's not all the time. This, this is it, okay? Oh, for reading, like I always say, they just read. They have library books. Um, we've got a gazillion books here. They just read. We have no problem with reading. Um, so this is all of her curriculum for the school year, okay? See? It's in like two hands. That's it. So everything that you see on the table, some of it I did have to buy to go with, you know, each of these subjects, but most of it, like half of it probably, is just stuff we may do, we may not do. It's just here if we need it, okay? And there's a lot more downstairs that I did not bring up just because it's already a lot to look at. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here is just an overview of the chaos <laughs> for my eighth grader. All right, now diving into it, um, again, we'll just start off with her language. So, Good and Beautiful Language Arts, Level 7. This is the course the course book that she will just, you know, do. And in case you don't know, the Good and Beautiful curriculum, it covers literature, grammar and usage, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, and writing. So this is her course book that she actually writes in. Um, and then they have to have this reader it's just one book, so it's just, you know, um, just full stories, poems, things like that. This is the course companion, and these are probably, like, one of my favorite things. Last year, she um, she had level five because it was our new, you know, our first year doing it. And I didn't know if we'd like it, if it'd be hard or easy, so um, I just wanted to ease her into it. Um, so last year, the course companion was just amazing. And this one has the same thing. The amazing part is um, this earlier stuff here that you see. Um, it just talks about, you know, spelling rules, um, grammar rules, things like that, sentence diagramming, terms to know. It's just really, it's something, you know, worth keeping. Um, she also has to have a language writing notebook. So whenever there's an assignment that says, you know, get out your, in your writer's notebook, write about this topic. So she has that for that. All right, and then also for the language, you have to have um, grammar and um, grammar and geography flashcards. This is only about half of them. The other half are in the other room. Okay, so the grammar and geography flashcards are used for level seven, levels four through seven. So both of my girls will be using this set. Now, the good and beautiful language. It also includes art, like I said. So for art, she needs some kind of sketchbook um, or art book. So we have the mixed media. It's good for the thick paper. It's good for acrylic, watercolor, and pen and pencil. So we have some watercolors and we have acrylic paints. And then we've also got other stuff too. We have chalk pastels and of course the, the normal traditional um, art supplies as well. So that includes 
the language that is necessary. Okay, so this stuff is kind of necessary for this program. Now to supplement the resource part, let me move the bench. Okay, the resource part, now I told you that she, um, you know, her weakness is like research papers and writing specific kinds of essays, okay? Um, she didn't need this so much, but I just thought, you know, she might like it, and I let her look at their sample, and she thought it might be fun. So this is also from The Good and Beautiful. It's Creative Writing Notebook Number 1, and on it, it said the child um, just does it whenever they want. There's no schedule to it. They can just pick the pages that they want. They don't have to go in order. Anyhow, so I just thought it might be something fun for her. Now, on to the part that she struggles with, the um, essay type. Well, I, maybe I shouldn't say struggles because we've never been, I've never been one to like, you know, hey, write this essay. So she, it's not so much that she struggles. Um, she just doesn't have the experience with it because I've never really required that. And that's my failure, which is why if you watched in the um, the fifth grade uh, walkthrough thing, I'm trying to not do that with my youngest. <laughs> okay, so these are a couple books that I picked up um, to maybe help her out. Um, this is a professor's guide to writing essays. It's the No Nonsense Plan for Better Writing. Um, I read reviews on this and it was supposed to be really, really good and very helpful. Uh, this guy here, let's see, it's for... It's for high school, college students, graduates, um, for all types of writing. Anyhow, it had good reviews. Now, this is just a book that she's just going to have, you know, for her and me both to have, just to go through and just try to help, you know, maybe guide, you know, guide her into, you know, a better writing, uh, writing a better essay or something, okay? It's not something that she has to do every single day. This is the same way. I bought this. This is Scholastic's Mastering the Five Paragraph Essay. Now, I was looking at this, and this one actually is, it's written to the teacher with, you know, lessons, what you do each day. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I will have her do lesson, like, one a week, or if it'll just be there on the shelf, you know, and if I see she's struggling with a certain part, maybe then. I'm not sure how I'm going to use this, but I do have it. And... The rest of these are books that I've had forever. Um, this is the English Handbook for Christian Schools. I think this was Bob Jones. Maybe not. Maybe that was a different one I had. Okay, Bob Jones University. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, sorry. Um, this is just a handbook, you know, for all things, you know, grammar and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's just a nice resource to have. And I know I've shown this one before. And this is the same thing. Just another grammar, nice resource to have, different rules. Um, it's just, this one's from Rod and Staff. It's the English Handbook. I really recommend this one. I use that one a lot. Um, this is one that um, I had to buy when I was in college. And I still have it. The reason I still have it is because it was so expensive that when I was done with college, I was like, I am not getting rid of that thing. I am keeping that, you know, because I <laughs> I may need it again or I may have kids that need it. So I kept it. Um, and this is basically the same, the same as those other two. It's just a guide, a handbook. You know, it tells you, you know, like different, how to write different things. Anyway, it's just a nice guide. This is another one that, of course, is the same as those. Um, we have not used this one. Um, I've looked through it and it's basically the same thing though. You know, just more helpful, you know, structures and writing and all kinds of stuff. And then this is another one that I had in college, um, writing essays and term papers. And these things are just expensive. I mean, of course, back then it says it was only five bucks and I think they're more than that now. But anyhow, that's what this is. So these are just, you know, resources, um, references, things like that to help help her and me out <laughs> um, with this whole writing. Because we've been talking about college and stuff, you know, and writing essays, at least when I was in school. Um, 
in order to get a scholarship, you know, it was writing essays. That was, that's what, what the winner was. Okay, so that takes care of the language part. Okay, so moving on over here to science. Um, I told you she's doing a Becca science order and design. Um, we're just doing this because we didn't do it last year and, you know, science. Okay, so that's the student. Um, this is the teachers. You can see it's the same as a student. It just probably has some answers in here. I don't know what it has. I didn't even open it up last year, so I don't even know. And then I don't know if we'll do these or not because we've never um, done the Abeka test and quizzes um, just because I didn't see a point in it. But with her being older now, going into eighth grade, we might do it. I don't know. But these are the tests and quizzes, and this is the activity book. So it's just like, you know, nice worksheets, multiple choice, things like that. Oh, that's the answer key for the activity workbook. Do I not have the workbook? Oh, there it is. All right. So then the last thing I bought, I bought this from The Good and Beautiful. It's the nature notebook. I just thought it was nice. And I like nature and plants and all that stuff. So um, there is no curriculum for this. You know, the child just... Uh, uses it when and where they want. Um, they don't have to go in order, you know, just pick out a page and do it. It's just, just something to do. Um, so I thought that was nice. Okay, so that is the science. Now, I'm going to go over here and we're going to move on to math. All right, and I already told you um, we're using the the Saxon Math 87, the Dive CD, and this is the math um, book. It's too small to work the problems out in it, so um, she's just writing it on regular notebook paper, and she's already started it. Okay, then this is um, the test and worksheets, so there's just like some facts, facts practice in here. Um, well, there's some other ones, too. Maybe they're all listed as facts practice. Anyhow, um, she's supposed to do, like, one of those a day, one sheet a day. And this is the solutions manual. So it gives the answers. All right. Now, to go with math, this these are two books I picked up a long time ago. Um, these are Cliff's Quick Review. This is um, a book over basic math and pre-algebra, and this one's over Algebra 1. So if there's any concept, you know, that maybe she forgot to do, she can just pull out these books and, um, you know, look it up, and it gives examples of how to do it, of how to, fo um, <laughs> of how to do the problems. So all the topics are in here. So these are just really nice, quick, you know, references to have on hand. Okay. Now, the history part is probably the biggest thing, so um, I'll go ahead. This is my planner. I'll go ahead and skip to this. This is my planner. Um, I know I did a video up here last year over this. Last year it was in color, but we are out of colored ink, and I don't feel like paying that right now to replace it. Um, so anyway, this is just the planner. Um, a wholesome plan for living education, and it's a Charlotte Mason inspired planner. Um, it's for sale at kerclick.com on my site, Precious Homeschool. And um, anyhow, so it just, yeah, just a planner. But if you're interested in seeing more about it, um, there's a, a video up here or on my channel where I actually show you all the pages in it, okay? Now, my, uh, my eighth grader, she has her planner. And I also, I make student planners as well. I've, they're on my website, precioushomeschool.com, and I think I have done a video or two maybe on them as well. But I do have them for sale. But, um, like I said, I'm out of colored ink, so I did not print her off one, and I don't know when I'm going to get colored ink again. Um, so I just picked this one up from Walmart, and I, I thought it was cute. It has this little, you know, glossy thing in this pocket, and um, a calendar, and each month, you know, has a tabbed divider that says something nice. 
and then so like here's October's and then it gives this stuff over here a writing page a monthly you know month at a glance and then it breaks it down into days so anyhow and then also something that's different is in the years past my children will have like one um, they'll have a one subject notebook for each school subject plus others like a bible one a memory one a vocab one spanish one so and, you know, when it's all said and done, they have several notebooks. Well, we tend to lose them. Like, I mean, we have to search and we, we find them. So we always use them, but they're just hard to keep up with because someone, namely me or my husband, are constantly grabbing the nearest notebook and making notes in it. And <laughs> anyhow, so I thought it might be best if we were to get a five subject notebook this year and try this. So these have these polyvinyl um, dividers with the two pockets, and it's just college-ruled paper, so maybe that might be better. Okay, now moving on to history. So I showed you this, okay, and this is for grades 1 through 12, and uh, like I said, last year was our first year doing the Simply Charlotte Mason history, and we did the Middle Ages, and we really enjoyed it, so we're moving on to the next book, which is this one, The Early Modern. Okay, so these are the books that I will be reading out loud to my kids. And these are the books that my fifth grader will be reading independently. And these are the books that my eighth grader will be reading independently. Okay, some of these books um, I had to buy because my library did not have, but the ones that my library does have um, will be renting those. So we will be borrowing from the library Amos, Fortune Free Man, uh, Carry On, Mr. Bowditch, uh, Johnny Tremaine, Poor Richard, and that's all that we'll be borrowing from the library. So these are the ones I bought. The Story of Modern France, because the library didn't have this. The World of William Penn, The Year of the Horseless Carriage, Diary of an Early American Boy, Hearts and Hands. So these are the ones that she'll be reading independently. So the ones that I have to read out loud are... Stories of the Nations, Volume 1, Stories of America, Volume 1, and our history, Early Ameri um, early Modern, it covers time period 1550 to 1850. And then I also bought the stuff they left behind, um, this portfolio, and what it is, it's just um, thick paper or thick cardstock with glossy, pretty pictures on it. And the pictures, they just cover things that you learn about in your history reading. Okay? And then I also, um, to go with these books, you know, because Charlotte Mason focuses on narration. So, a new thing they offer, well, it may not be new, but I just found out about it. Um, narration note cards. This particular packet is for Stories of the Nation, so it'll go with this book. They also have them for Stories of America, but this little set here, it was only, um, it was $10, and I didn't want to buy both sets because I didn't know if we'd want them or not, and we didn't have any issue last year narrating, but I just thought it might be fun to have, you know, some prompts or ideas or, you know, specific words to look for, so I just went ahead and bought one pack, and we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> Okay, so that is what is required for history, okay? Now, the history additions, the supplements, um, is this stack and this stack. Okay, so, um, you know, just because we have the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, my library has history kids. Um, they have got... They've got so many videos um, in this series, and each video focuses on a different thing in history. Like, this one is the Supreme Court, and it has the newest, or it has Neil Gorsuch on here. Um, but anyway, just, you know, good educational uh, videos. Um, then we have this book, The Civil War. Now, I do not know if we're going to be using any of this stuff, or what we'll be using. Okay, like I said, I have a several, I have much, much more downstairs. I just picked up some from the bookshelf and brought them up here, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of, you know, our style, I guess. So here's Unsolved Mysteries of American History. 
I picked this up many years ago. So all these books I picked up a long time ago. Here's American History by Kenneth Davis, and I'm not sure. We've never used it, so I don't know. This one I did a video on, Prayers That Changed History. Um, this is just a really interesting book. Fun facts about the American adventure. This is just like, you know, um, quizzes, questions, answers, music, things like that. Um, okay, Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims by Rush Limbaugh. Um, Rush Limbaugh, he has four or five of these. This is the first one. Um, the people I've talked to, I've talked to two different people that have read these, and they say that they're boring. Um, I really hope not, because... The idea is really great. However, um, I did read the prologue and I read all of chapter one uh, myself. I did not think it was boring. Um, I think that uh, my kids and my husband, you know, will enjoy this. Um, we will read these out loud in the evening. Um, that's just what we do. Um, my husband likes it when I read out loud in the evening when he gets home from work. And then David McCullough, 1776. I bought this book a long time ago. Um... I have never read it, but my husband started reading it a few years ago, and he never got finished because he said we kept interrupting him, which unfortunately is true, but um, what he did read, which I think he read at least half of it, maybe more, but what he did read, he really enjoyed, so maybe we can get to that one. And then I have this that a friend uh, gave me, History Pockets, Explorers of North America, History Pockets from Colonial Time, or Colonial America. And I don't know if we'll use these. I love the ideas of, you know, lap book and all that, but they're getting older, so we may not. Scholastic, Interactive, 3D Maps, American History. And this is a, a CD-ROM game. Um, you actually, it's, it, this one, they have them for different time periods and different things. They even have, like, a comic book one. Well, not a comic book, like a superhero one. So, this is this one focuses on U.S. history, and it's a comic book maker. So, you put the CD-ROM in there, and then the book actually tells you, you know, how to go about making different things and different scenes. You get to make the people, um, just all kinds of stuff. Anyway, my kids like that when they do it. They don't do it very much, but when they do, they do like it. Um, American History, Know the Facts, Review Game. I also got this from a friend. Yes, I have a great friend. I'm sure she's listening. You're great. Okay, um, and this is Draw and Write Through History, Napoleon to Lady, to Lady Liberty. Um, I don't know if we'll use this, but, you know, it's here. And then, from the same friend, the U.S. History Cookbook. Um, again, I don't know if we'll use it. And I did, I told her that. I said, oh, you know me. I said, you know I'm going to want all this stuff, but I don't know if I'll use it. And she laughed because she's the same way. But it's there if we want to use it. Okay. Um, now, this, The Story of the World, Volume 3, Early Modern Times, it's about the same time period as Simply Charlotte Mason, Early Modern. So the reason I decided to buy this is because last year when we did um, Simply Charlotte Mason, we did uh, right here. Sorry, I can't focus in right. We did right here, the Middle Ages, Renaissance, and Reformation. And I had the Story of the World, Volume 2, which is about the Middle Ages. So I just had it. You know, another friend gave it to me. And so I just had it. And um, so I pulled it out. And it correlated pretty much perfectly with the Charlotte Mason book. So I thought, well, if that worked, maybe this will work too. So I bought this one to, in hopes of correlating with this one. Because it was a really nice, nice correlation. Okay? So that takes care of that. Now for the um, timeline. Charlotte? All right. Sorry about that. My battery on my phone had died. Okay. So um, I think I was talking about the timeline. So... The uh, history curriculum, you know, it suggests having a timeline, and they have a free one or they have a nicer one that you can purchase. I don't really care for either one of theirs. Um, I like this method better. Um, you know, just a, a two-page spread. This is just one I made up, you know, the same dates 
on, I think I had the same dates on like four or five pages. That way we've been using this for quite a few years now, um, the same book. When we started, I actually had it in a binder and then a year or two ago, I had it spiral bound. So yeah, this is just one that um, I just made up. So the timeline figures that we use are History Through the Ages um, timeline figures, and this is by Homeschool in the Woods. Okay, so that is our timeline. Okay, so this was history, and history covers, you know, with a timeline, history covers, um, well, the Simply Charlotte Mason, the early modern, covers history, geography, and Bible. But like I said in the beginning, we do not do their, their geography or their Bible. Um, so this is what we're doing for geography. Um, and again, this is just resources. We may or may not use these. Um, the library that we have to drive a distance to that we go to now has everything we could ever need for geography, for movies and books. It's just, it's incredible what they have. But this is just Uncle Josh's outline map collection CD-ROM. It has over 260 printable maps um, for, you know, region, regions or countries or anything really. Um, I had to buy this last year for the Simply Charlotte Mason the last year. So I still have this and uh, that's a good thing. Um, these flashcards, state and capitals, I showed you this in another video. Um, it's just what they say, they're state and capitals, and they also have some country cards on here as well. The girls mastered this last year, but we'll just um, review them periodically just to make sure they remember them. Another set of flashcards I've had forever, landmarks. So this is, and these books are just books I've had for a long time. This is um, a Young Reader's Atlas, you know, so it just covers different um, countries and such. Uh, the Usborne Book of Peoples of the World. The World. Children Just Like Me. And this book is just a two-page spread of um, a child in different... Um, like over here, it tells you the country, India. It tells you the child's name. So this is her name. And this is how she spells her name. And it just tells you some about her, you know, her house where she lives, her family, some friends, her school uniform, pets, the type of food she eats. And it does that with each child. I think they have a newer version now. And um, this is Reader's Digest, See the USA, The Easy Way. Um, this is an old book, so I'm sure the roadmaps are highly outdated, but this was my grandma's, and, um, but it still has, you know, some good information, so, um, it focuses on, you know, like, each section is about a different state, so there's just different information, okay? So you can see that New York there had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14... 16. Anyway, it looks like there's several pages um, that cover each state. And this is something else that was my grandma's. Um, this is America the Beautiful. It's also by Reader's Digest. And this is a very old book. So um, when it was made, I'm sure it was beautiful. Um, the the camera, you know, photograph quality nowadays is just, you know, much better than it was then. But this is just a book that just has nice pictures and a lot of information about, you know, like here's Yellowstone, okay? So it just has nice pictures and a lot of information about different parts of America. You know, so the Grand Canyon's on here, all kinds of stuff. And this book is um, The Young People's Atlas of the United States. Actually, it's similar to that little one I had, isn't it? Young Readers. Okay. Anyway, and this, just a two-page spread, focuses on each state. Okay? So, that is the geography part of it. And like I said, the library has, uh, the library has a whole aisle, a whole shelf, big one, devoted to, um, DVDs. And each DVD focuses on a different state and and a different country and different cultures. Um, 
it's just, it's interesting. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not. It's, my phone's been charging for a little while, now I forget what all I talked about. Um, anyhow, but here's a, I think I did mention this, because this, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, so that covers the geography. Now, the Bible part, and like I said, um, we're not doing their Bible. So, this stack and this stack is our Bible. And, you know, these are just references, resources, supplements, things to do, okay? So, um, so what we're doing for our Bible is we are still doing scripture memory. Um, that's something that we don't have any trouble with. Um, it's so simple. And I do believe in another video I explained how, how I use this system. But anyhow, so that is, um, that's that. All right, so that's a scripture memory. So what we'll do with our Bible um, is, you know, we'll do our scripture memory, and it only takes like a minute. Um, and then we will um, read the Bible. And I don't know if I will pick out themes, you know, like we'll study a certain person or topic, I don't know. Or maybe we'll, we'll just open the Bible and just read, you know, start at one place and continue to read. I don't know if I will do all the reading out loud or if we will go around the table and reading every, you know, like each person reads so many verses like we have in the past. I don't know that setup, but we will read out loud one way or the other. And then, so like if I'm reading, uh, my children, which I have another one, but my children, they'll take um, their sketchbook and do some doodling, journaling, whatever. Um, they can take um, all kinds of art supplies that we have and they can, you know, draw or write, take notes, whatever they want while we're reading, um, that's available to them. We will, uh, of course, read and discuss. And then um, these books here, these three, are for um, deeper learning. And I know I've went over with, I've went over these before in a different video, what the Bible is all about for young, for young explorers. This Bible, um, each chapter focuses on a different part of the Bible and tells you about it. And anyway, it's just a really neat, they have, you know, colored photographs every so often. It's just a really neat, um, resource to have on hand. The Essential Bible Companion, that's another one. Um, you know, each two-page spread focuses on a different book of the Bible. This one's my favorite, though. Um, they're different, so they go good together, but I like the other one. Um, this is Window on the World, and this is just a two-page, each page is a two-page spread. Um, it talks about, like, different, um, different countries, different people groups, different, um, you know, their faiths, their cultures, uh, their beliefs, how to pray for them, just different things like that. So, those are just, you know, references to refer to, obviously. And, let's see. Hmm, what do I want to do next? Um, okay, I'll do this one. Okay, this is a book, The Book of Virtues by William Bennett. And this is a collection of all the writings, um, he he took writings from he took the Bible, Shakespeare, um, different uh, works of art. <laughs> Sorry, not necessarily like works of art, like art artwork, but you know, um, printed works of art, I guess you could say. And he like um, he really sifted through them and found you know like okay, um, you know this focuses on self discipline, and so there's others in, on here and in here on responsibility and work, uh, friendship. So this is just like a character book. And I'm sorry if I'm stumbling over myself and talking fast. I'm trying to beat the camera before the battery dies again because I didn't charge it up all the way. Okay. This is another book that's similar to this but, but different at the same time. This is Parenting with Scripture and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before as well. Um, so each... Okay, so each two-page spread focuses on a different, you know, type of character. Sorry about that again. <clears throat> okay, so like I was saying, this book, um, it focuses, each two-page spread focuses about a different character trait, you know, or something to help the child. So this one's on guilt. 
They have them on responsibility, habits, compassion, discouragement, cursing, crafty, courage, cooperation, confidence, and all that. Um, this book, I forgot to mention in my fifth graders' uh, curriculum choices, but this is 50 Things Every Young Lady Should Know. And I know I've mentioned this in another video. Um, this is just a real simple uh, short thing, you know, just on good manners and hospitality, things like that. Okay, so um, our library has the super book. Um, it's animated uh, cartoons for Bible. They also have from the Nest, from Nest uh, Family Entertainment. <clears throat> this is also animated cartoon Bible stories. And they also have these for historical figures as well. Um, this is just a Bible trivia card game. And this is a children's Bible trivia game board. Um, it's just a fun game, you know, things that we'll do. Okay, and that covers the history, Bible, and geography. The last two things that I would need to show you, and again, as you can see, I've been putting some of this stuff away because, well, my phone's been charging. Um, okay, and I know I've, I've showed, I have shown these before in, um, like last year's video or the year before, but, and I don't know if we will do this again or not, but it's here if we want to. So for vocabulary, if we want to continue with this, it's Marie's words. We do like this. Um, this is a box of flashcards. They help prepare you for um, like ACT, SAT test. So, and I know that I showed how we um, did this, but um, in another video. But anyway, it's basically like this. Um, well, I don't, my, my battery will go dead again, so I won't have time to explain it, but you can look the video up if you're interested in how we did it. Um, but we enjoyed it. And then also our Spanish, and I don't know if we will continue this or not. We started this book the year before last, and we was going to finish it last year, but we just didn't. So we might pick this back up. Um, in addition to possibly doing this, they love um, Duolingo. It's an app, D U O. Um, L-I-N-G-O. They love that, and th they've been doing that for several months now, so, you know, we might go ahead and do this, but um, I do have a video on this, but this is um, just short Spanish lessons, you know, like Lesson 92, 93, I mean, 9091. It's, they're just short lessons, and here's a Spanish and English dictionary that I picked up. We have, uh, we've had this for a good while already. This is just the Osborne Spanish Dictionary for Beginners. And we've also had this for a long time. I got at a flea market, um, just a Spanish thing. So, you know, we may, we may not do those, um, but they are here if we decide to. Um, but when we did those, we liked them. So I think, I think that covers everything. So, um, yeah, I think so. Anyway, if you have any questions about anything, just ask, or if you want to see anything in, you know, more detail, just ask, and I'll try to do that video. So thank you for watching, and have a good day.